Hey guys, Dr. Mike and Dr. Erica here, and I wanted to shoot this video today talking about the topic of health, of course. And really though, I wanted to break it down and keep it as simple as possible. Oftentimes, even though health can be complex, um, often though, people uh, overthink, overanalyze, and actually end up doing nothing, right? And ideas and thoughts are great, but if you don't take action, it's all meaningless. So I wanna break it down and give you five topics. The way I title this is the five pillars of optimal health. Uh, okay. Number one is proper nerve supply, okay? Free of subluxation. Of course you say, well, of course he's saying that's number one, he's a chiropractor. Well, I got news for you guys, all right? The spine's a lot more than just your back. It's your brain. And you can eat the best foods in the world. You can exercise and lift weights and do cardio. You can have uh, the, the best mental mindset. But if your brain cannot communicate out to the body in the way it, 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 at 100% optimal health, you won't assimilate the food properly. Your immune system won't work well. You're not going to heal and recover from workouts, right? So at the end of the day, your brain controls everything and needs to be working in an optimum optimal manner and getting regular care. You don't brush your teeth only when your teeth hurt, right? You take care of them regularly. You need to take care of this as well, okay? Number two, regular exercise, all right? Um, we are in a society and in a time and age, we are more sedentary than ever. In the next 25 years, it's estimated that one in three Americans will actually have type two diabetes. Crazy. And that's surprising. We, we have the, the, the most obesity, the, the, the most cancer, heart disease. We're a sick country and one of the main reasons is because we are sitting on our butts all day. People were designed to be able to walk and hike and travel nomadic times, miles every day and hunt and gather. We weren't designed to sit with poor posture on a computer and be stressed out every single day. Our bodies need to move proper exercise. So um, we're going to dive in, uh, you know, in other videos about how to do some of these act, uh, active steps proactively, but get up, get up and move. Sitting is detrimental. Sitting is the new smoking. So regular exercise. What does that look like for me? Regular exercise for me, my job, I'm up and moving all day, every day, which is great. I love it. The only time my body, my back hurts or I feel really anxious, honestly, is when I have to sit, when I have mm -hmm. to sit for long times. So I move all day in my job. Throughout the week, I'll do, I, I bike, I walk, uh, I'll do spin bike a few times a week, we 20, 30 minutes, we hike, and then I like to lift weights. So I lift weights probably four, four to five days a week for about 45 minutes, okay? It may look different for you, but I know when I exercise, not only do I feel better physically, most importantly though, I feel a lot better mentally. Like today I was working out and I said, you know, the best drug in the world is the hormones in the, 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 the feel good, the blood rush that you get from working out. They call it the runner's high. It's a great feeling. It makes you feel good. It's called endorphin release. Endorphin. So exercise, regular exercise. What's your plan? Do you have a plan? Proper nutrition. Speak a little bit about that. So proper nutrition is very simple. We've done a lot of nutritional seminars in our office, but I think the, the ding ding light went off in our mind, in my mind specifically, when I realized that bottom line, you eat foods made by God, not by man. The second that we take something out of its natural form or natural habitat, it's detrimental to your health. Um, so proper nutrition is gonna equal lots of vegetables. Notice how I did not say fruits and vegetables. Um, fruit has a lot of sugar in it. So it's okay to eat fruit, but you don't want to eat tons of fruit. So primarily vegetables, nuts and seeds, high fat diet is good for you. Did you hear that? Fat is okay. Um, it's yeah, called the right types of fats. So avocados and eggs coconut. and bone marrow and coconut, high, good quality fats. Again, things that God placed on this earth. The second that we take a food, we process that. We do trans fats like in potato chips and cookies. That's what's going to kill you. That's what's going to give you heart disease and cancer. Okay? And, and another good way to think about it is, which I heard recently, eat living food, not dead food. Yes. All right. And most of this food, by the time it gets out of the can box or, or, or package or out of the freezer aisle, 
the nutrients are gone. They're stripped away. Again, we don't own a microwave. The second you microwave food, it, it's going to kill all of your nutrients. I mean, these are these are little choices that are not hard to follow by. But the principle is shop the perimeter. And again, we're going to do more videos specifically on nutrition as we get a little yeah, bit deeper. Yeah, the ingredient you don't want an ingredients list. You want whole foods. You don't have to read an ingredient list with all these chemicals in it. But really, guys, why would you eat poison? You're eating you're eating poisonous cancer. Yeah. Eat living whole clean and let's foods. just real quick go back to nomadic times okay people in the nomad days what didn't they have that we have today in america i mean deep fryers and mcdonald's I guess. <laughs> that's probably a benefit um but the thing is they did not die or they did not possess heart disease cancer diabetes alzheimer's alzheimer's is at an all-time high and that is due to a high inflammatory grain related high sugar diet okay um so when we look at diet Feed your body well, your body will produce well for you. What you put in, you get out. You have to sleep. So, Dr. Mike, do you like to sleep? I, I think everybody likes to sleep <laughs> to a degree, right? And you, and you need proper sleep. Yes. Right? Sleep is when your body will recover, yep. when your immune system will work optimally and repair your cells. So you, you need to sleep. It's... Uh, but there's an excess too where you know you're laying in bed too much sleep you're going to be too tired too much sleep too little sleep is a bad thing but you need to have sufficient rest okay Obviously, most people six to eight. what's that six to eight hours is six sufficient hours. for people um okay. but i will say this i'm going to tie this back into chiropractic real quick because when people's nervous systems are dysfunctional their body is in a high state of stress they're in pain they're in discomfort they suffer from anxiety they do not get restful sleep so now not only is that person having nerve dysfunction but they're having sleep dysfunction with le which leads to whole body dysfunction, sickness, illness, and disease, okay? So good sleep tied in with all of these other things, but we obtain good sleep when we're eating well, when we're exercising, and when our nervous system is healthy, okay? Last one is mindset. Um, mindset is something that grips people. I will say from the five years, five and a half years we've been in practice, I never thought I'd see so many people taking anxiety and depression medications. And I and look children, at actually. people's children cases, too. I review their files, and I would say a good 60 or so percent plus are either taking one anxiety medication or depression medication. And I'm just floored by this because, you know, I think in my mind, we live in a stressful society, but the way that we interpret stress and the way that we respond to stress will actually dictate how we feel about this stress and the outcome of that stress. And one thing that I recently shared with you was, you know, am I going to be thinking about this stressor right now on my deathbed or in my last days or in my final years or even when I'm retired? And if the answer is no, there sometimes needs to be action taken on that stress, but at the same point, it doesn't need to cause detrimental health effects, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So how are you interpreting stress? Are, are you getting pent up and bound up and yelling and uh, you know, getting yourself all in this tizzy and depressive tizzy and then just laying on the couch and sulking about it? Or are you looking at different stressors as new opportunities? And for example, I think COVID this last year has given us a lot of really good opportunities to do these videos. We never really wanted to do videos until we said we have more time to do social media. Um, we have, I think, in our own relationship, just had a really good transition into getting back out in nature, which is where you and I grew up. And so we're going out and we ride the razor and we go hiking with the dogs and, you know, we, we take trips and go to the mountains. And so there's, there's ways of interpreting the stress and putting on that right mindset. The last thing I'm going to say about this, when you wake up, your vision of when you wake up will absolutely determine what type of day you're going to have. The first couple thoughts in your mind is what's going to determine the outcome of that day. It sets the tone for your day. So my action step to you on this last point is when you wake up tomorrow, you make that choice of not hitting the snooze button, but saying, I'm going to have a great day and focus on something positive that you're going to do that day. Focus on a goal that you have that day, um, whatever it may be. If you do that, you will have a much more positive, high energy day. Yeah, hundred percent. So five pillars of optimal health. Um, we hope you guys have a wonderful day and we love, uh, we look forward to continuing to dissect these a little bit more. Don't overthink it, ink it, and then do it. Okay. You got to act. Have a great day.